Hey, everyone. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, thank you for being here. We know it's late in the day. Um, our uh, presentation is an update from last year's. Uh, we have this awesome project called Mapping for Equity. Uh, I'm Jazzy. I use she, her pronouns. I'm the director of the fellowship program, and I'm going to pass it on to Dimitri to introduce himself. Hello, everyone. I'm Dimitri. I'm the manager of the Civic Innovation Fellowship Program. And I'm passing it. Hi, I'm Naima. I work alongside Jazzy and Dimitri as a Civic Innovation Associate. Awesome. Um, if you want to access the slides, there's the bit.ly. Um, all right, so we're Beta NYC. Guess where we're based? Um, we're a small but mighty team. Uh, our mission is to uh, support New Yorkers by demystifying open data um, through data literacy programs. Um, so our program is the Civic Innovation Fellowship. We've been doing it for a while. Uh, this is gonna be our 10th year hosting cohorts of fellows. Uh, next year we will graduate our 100th fellow. Um, is anyone here familiar with the CUNY school system? Raise your hand. Okay, a few. Um, for those who aren't familiar, uh, CUNY is the largest national urban public university system, and they are phenomenal and uh, known for actually creating social mobility for their students. Um, so we recruit fellows from CUNY schools. All right, so this presentation is an update, but I'll give you a little bit of a brief on what the Mapping for Equity project is. Um, it's a civics and data literacy project where we teach our fellows to see data as they're surveying public spaces and create it in particularly underrepresented and undermapped um, public spaces in New York. Um, our question is how can data make the city work for New Yorkers, right? Um, and our hypothesis is that the more we get the public contributing to these open data sources, um, like OpenStreetMap, we create a more comprehensive picture of what New York City is. Um, who here loves New York? Raise your hand. Okay, nice. Um, <laughs> some context. Um, we are huge. We have five boroughs. We didn't go out and just map everything. Um, we started with Brooklyn Community District 1, which is in red. Um, we partnered with uh, local community partners and a local elected. We partnered with North Brooklyn Parks Alliance. They're dedicated to making more green, um, accessible space for North Brooklyn as well as um, just a better life for North Brooklyners. Um, we also partnered with uh, Jen Gutierrez, who's a city council member. She's also the chief of technology. So being strategic with our partners, we're aligned in the mission. Um, that's why we started with this district. Here's also some facts about uh, Community District 1 in Brooklyn. All right, so why is this important? Um, Teaching civics and open data uh, supports folks to advocate for their needs. Um, so often in New York, we're walking really fast. We see so many broken things. We don't really think about avenues to advocate for such amenities, right? Um, also, the more perspectives on the map, the better. And I would argue a more accurate NYC is represented. All right, can I get a drum roll, please? <laughs> Thank you. Passing on to Naima for our updates. Okay, so first on our updates, we started using Mapillary. Who here uses Mapillary? Awesome. So for those who haven't used it, <clears throat> Mapillary is a platform that makes street level images and map data available to scale and help automate mapping. Last year, Beta NYC partnered with Mapillary, shown on our right, um, and was awarded a camera grant to enhance street level imagery and map data coverage in New York City. Our focus areas include pedestrian areas, specifically streets, parks, public housing, and playgrounds in North Brooklyn. On our left is examples of our mapillary coverage, and on our right is an image of one of our past associates capturing imagery on a city bike. 
The integration of Mapillary's re resources allowed the fellowship team to provide detailed and up-to-date visual data, improve the accuracy and richness of map information, and support our fellows in their mapping with real-time, high-resolution imagery. The fellowship continues to be fueled by innovation, utilizing a variety of resources and tools, such as Mapillary, to help our fellows master the intricacies of OpenStreetMap. Passing it to Dimitri. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let's do the updates, part two. Um, since having come here at our last state of the map, um, in recent months, we've been able to use a combination of Mapillary footage that was documented by our awesome associates, including Naima, and a mix of field mapping with fellows to actually wrap up most of Community District 1, which is really cool. And in one noteworthy instance, we were able to team up with community members who actually reside in the district in North Brooklyn and have them come out and volunteer with us and actually cover the largest green space in Community District 1, McCarran Park, which was an awesome experience. There's a picture showing a few of our fellows and our awesome volunteers here. Um, yeah, you can see a spread of the features that we've covered in uh, Community District 1 here. We've covered over 5,000 features, including um, over 1,000 benches, 1,000 streetlights, nearly four miles of paths, um, sidewalks, crossings. Um, we've also covered about 350,000 square feet of green spaces, including gardens, parks, playgrounds in the district. And this is just our most recent progress map, and we're actually currently validating the rest of the data that our fellows have mapped through OpenStreetMap and through various events. And as we continue to account for the work that we've done, these maps and these numbers are expected to grow and better reflect the work that we've done in the district. Um, next slide, please. So yeah, here's an example of McCarran Park, which I just mentioned. Um, and this is just a snapshot of the work that we do in parks. Um, this is a map focusing on point features and I think one line um, steps that were in the park. And this is just an example of how we kind of team up with um, our fellows, with volunteers, and with our partners to cover open spaces in New York City. Yeah, and our next steps, we're thinking about developing a more detailed resource map that better accounts for the features that we've covered as part of this project and that better illustrates the work that fellows and volunteers have done. So we're planning on developing more detailed visualizations showing this work. And we're also looking to collaborate with our partners, the awesome North Brooklyn Parks and um, Jen Gutierrez's office to develop a more detailed and more complex product that shows the work that we've done. This could be a web page. It could be um, another visualization that's more interactive that just demonstrates the spread of information that we've been able to capture with the help of Mapillary and field mapping. Cool. Yeah, we've also been trying different ways to engage with community as we move on to the next phase of this project. Um, one example of that is our data entry events. So during Open Data Week, which is a week-long festival of events celebrating open data that happens yearly in March in New York, we actually had um, folks come out to document directly in OpenStreetMap the features that were mapped in person at the field mapping event that, I would, that was mentioned earlier. Um, and so we had people come in who attended the event and some who didn't and who were just there for the first time. And we sat around together with our fellows and we had them make their OpenStreetMap accounts and actually document features directly on um, the platform, which was really awesome. And this was the first step in testing this aspect of our toolkit. And it was pretty cool. It was nice to see people treat this as a hobby and just kind of document open space as a fun activity. So yeah, that was really nice. Passing it over to Naima. Yeah, another engagement strategy we tried was direct community building by collaborating with community organizations. Last month, in this space you see here in this picture, we held a graduation event for our fellows in collaboration with El Puente, a community organization in North Brooklyn. We showcased our work alongside other organizations, and this helped us extend our audience and expand who we impact in both an interactive and celeb celebratory way. During the showcase, we invited local electeds to directly engage with our work. In this picture, I am walking assemblywoman Emily Gallagher through Mapillary and the imagery we captured of North Brooklyn. Um, through this event, we found that local officials recognize our impact and want to use our data to improve the communities they serve. 
Community members also were enthusiastic to share their perspectives with us, such as what amenities are important to them and why. And many of these amenities were already emphasized during our mapping throughout our fellowship curriculum. Um, Jazzy will say more about the curriculum now. Yay. Awesome. Um, thank you both. Um, all right, another communi uh, community engagement strategy. Um, I think Stephen said this yesterday, but it takes a lot of work to compile learning resources um, and teaching folks how to host events. So what we did is just kind of like create a toolkit of the things that we used and we're passing it on to see if it sticks. Um, we partnered with Code with the Carolinas. Uh, they now have our toolkit and are testing it. They're gonna host some mapping events and it's gonna be really interesting to see uh, how this floats in a totally different context, right? Um, we also did something very fun and non-digital. Um, our fellows made a zine. Um, we still live in the material world. Materials are still important. Um, but the zine uh, includes an intro to OpenStreetMap as well as um, an intro to ma the Mapping for Equity project. We're selling the zines for 10 bucks a pop. We're still a nonprofit. Um, but if you would like a copy of these, um, let me know after. But the digital copy is free. Um, yeah, this is one of the pages from the zine. Um, another uh, engagement strategy is we created a sizzle reel, which is a bit of like a commercial on um, this project and about OSM and why it's important. Uh, what this allows is it allows people's actual voices um, and actually like a narrative on the impact um, and why they find it important. Um, so yeah, this will be released later on in the summer. If you want to stay tuned for the launch, uh, sign up for our newsletter. All right, we have a bunch of links and things to share with you. If you'd like to um, see them, here's the QR code, here's a bit.ly link. Um, but thank you so much, State of the Map US, for inviting us here and for all of you listening. Thank you. Thank you so much for the great presentation and for the very important work that you do in community engagement. Are there any questions? Um, thanks, that was a really cool talk. Uh, I'm curious, yeah, I liked all of your sort of interesting engagement strategies and like different kind of ways of marketing this and like presenting your, the results. Um, what, what did you find were the most effective, I, like I really like the zine and the, the other things that you've produced. What, what were kind of the most effective ways of, of engaging and kind of sharing that information out for you guys? Um, can I take this one? Okay, um, you know, I think after the pandemic, people are really eager to meet up again in person. Um, and as, I don't know, as surprising as, as it may seem, uh, people are really wanting to be invested in their local parks um, and they wanna meet other people that are interested in that too. So I find that our events, especially in person, are the most effective. Um, yeah, and what we've found is that as we continue to do these events, uh, we get regulars. Um, so, yeah. Also, the zine and the sizzle reel. The zine is out. The sizzle reel isn't out yet. So, we'll see. Um, what's like the breakdown and the motivations for the people who show up? Maybe when they first join and then later on, do you see a split between like the altruistic side versus social, skill building, et cetera? That's a good question. Yes, Dimitri's gonna take it. Yeah, um, that's really interesting. We've been wondering the same thing because like it directly ties into how we kind of share this with people. And what we found is that it's an interesting mix, right? Some people come out of like a clear purpose. They're like, yeah, we want better parks. We want better amenities. We want to know where our public features are. But then you have some people who are just coming as just a hobby. Um, it was really interesting to see, especially during the data entry event where we had people go on to OpenStreetMap. Some people were like, this is like knitting. Like I just, just <laughs> I get to just like add like features and sometimes they duplicate and we just get to 
jot things down and it's kind of a chance for them to relax from their like daily activity or like their daily workflow. So we don't know the exact answer, but I'm guessing it would be a mix of like activism and just wanting to do something for fun. We have time for one last question. Okay, if there are no takers, then thank you very much again for the great presentation. And we'll be back in 10 minutes with the closing session.